Hey there everybody, Eric from Outer Limitless coming at you today with another video. Now in today's video we are going to look at this outdoor off-road survival toolkit from the company Yakul. So today I'm out here at Bushcraft Wonderland. This particular location is where I've set off to build a bushcraft camp. And these survival wilderness tools from Yakul are going to be absolutely instrumental in my ability to succeed. Now, we have looked at a number of Yakul products in the past, and specifically, I actually used one of the Yakul shovels in episode two of my bushcraft shelter build. And it really did help me get things started and established. But today we're gonna look at a more comprehensive kit. This off-road survival kit here is Yakul's most comprehensive to date. This has a number of tools very similar to what we've looked at in the past and a number of other things that I think are going to be very, very useful in this exact location. But with that said, I have a whole bunch to do and a whole bunch to share with you. And if you're interested in seeing a little bit more about what I'm about to get into, do me a favor, stay tuned. Now before we get too far, I would like to say thank you very much to the people at Yakul who did provide this product for review. And so as we get into this here, here you'll see the new pouch compared to their existing pouch. Now each one of their products has come with a little bit of a change in terms of the tool configuration, the tool construction, and also the pouch that it comes with. So this particular shovel you'll see in this nylon pouch on the back here, very straightforward with a belt loop couple little D-rings to put a shoulder strap, Velcro enclosure, not a lot to it. Fairly simple. And at an initial glimpse, you would think that this new kit was also similar. However, I can say they have made some significant improvements. And I do like this case quite a bit. As you look here, very simple on the front, but the first thing you'll see, they did put a nice Velcro field here. So if you like morale patches and you want to put them on there, very simple and very straightforward, but it's a nice touch. And on the back, very nicely done with molly webbing. So now you have the capability of lashing this onto a pack, which is great. So this is typical molly spacing, which is nice and gives you the ability to really at this point make it part of a more comprehensive kit. I do very much like that. Over the top of the pouch here, you'll see a nice grab handle and ample size and strength and also some D-rings in a good orientation. I like the fact that these are on the back of the pack. That makes it easy because you can still have this slung over your shoulder, yet at the same time access the tools, which is a nice way of going about it. Now, not only does this have molly and straps on the back side but it also has molly fields going around the side so if you had additional little pouches that you wanted to add on to this that's going to work mighty fine so overall i do need to say yakul is doing a nice job improving and continually pushing forward with their products and bringing little innovations as they move forward so nicely done now, as I mentioned, this toolkit is much more comprehensive than the other toolkits we've looked at in the past. And that's what's gonna make this particular toolkit a real good option for me while I'm out here. Now, if you're anything like me, I'm into the hiking, camping, and backpacking genre. The first thing I can tell you, this kit will not be suitable for a long distance trip. It is quite heavy, quite bulky, but if you are somebody who, say for example, would like to bring this on an ATV, or in my case, I am bringing this toolkit out here for this shelter build. This is going to live essentially outside for the next number of months. So it's gonna be a great test to see how this holds up over time. Now it is gonna be protected. I've built myself a tool cache so I can keep this out of the weather and nice and safe, but bottom line is it's still gonna live in the outdoor elements. And so now opening this up, you can approach it a couple different ways, but the nice thing you'll see, you have the capability of just pulling this open with ease. Now I do have a couple of extra things in here. This is the breakout. So your overall instructions and description of all the tools. Once you get used to this kit, this will go away, but I did want to show it comprehensive so you were able to understand. And the other thing is here you'll see some grip tape. So all of Yakul's products do come with grip tape. That's a real nice thing because when you do get into this, you'll see that all of these nicely machined aluminum handles, well, that's just it. They're aluminum. I'm out here today and it's cold and my hands are cold 
and the tools are cold. So having just a nice little bit of grip tape, well, that's going to help. Now, as far as the overall grip on the handle, they do a nice job. You'll notice if you look up close, some diamond pattern knurling. It does do a very nice job and aid in your ability to grip and even with gloves on. So chances are for me, I will be working with gloves on today, but you can see overall just nicely machined. The other thing that's always nicely done is their machining of the threads. Always nicely done, well tapered, and they're nice and coarse. You don't ever wonder if something's going to thread or cross thread. That's never been a problem. And now each and every one of the segments is gasketed. So if you look closely, you'll notice they are O-ring gasketed. That helps with a nice tight fit as you put segments of the tool together and they don't chatter, they don't roll too much, and it helps them stay firm while you're using the tools. So Yakul doing a great job with their construction and their overall manufacturing. And so now that I have everything laid out, the first thing is here you'll see the strap. So the strap did go to the case, allows you to clip it on and carry it like that if you wish. I'm going to put that aside for now. And as you look at the tool segments here laid out, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight handle segments. You end up with a cap. You have this what looks like a lanyard, but this actually is itself a comprehensive kit. Now I'm not going to get into this in complete detail today, that's for another day, but I will talk about it in a little bit. You have a shovel head, a pick and hoe, and an axe head. These tools are going to be great. Now I do think that you could, in theory, build all three of these tools with these handle segments and have them ready to go. There is going to be a little bit of a caveat that, again, I will talk about in a little bit. But with that said, let's get into these in a little more detail. So each one of these handle segments has something slightly different going on. Now, many of these are just standard handles. So you can see here, a number of these are just standard handle segments. Well, inside here, we'll pull that aside and we'll take a look at that in a bit. So all of these are exactly the same. So you can split these up however you want. You can basically connect them all together, get whatever length you want, and you can put these on the shovel, you can put them on the pick, or on the hoe, or on the ax handle. Now, there is the caveat that whenever you're doing chopping tasks, you can't put too many handle segments on there because you'll over torque and you may bend or break a piece of this. So they do recommend minimizing the overall number of handle segments when you're doing chopping tasks. But for me, quite honestly, because I have other axes here at this campsite, I probably won't use this too, too much. Now, if I have a guest and I'm looking to do a lot of work and I'm trying to put another tool in somebody's hands, this might be great. And the fact that this is multifunction and very flexible is gonna give me that luxury. So it's nice having this here. I just personally myself probably won't use this too, too much. But the tool I'm most excited for, and I think it's going to make a real big difference for me here at the camp, is this pick and hoe. I need to do a whole bunch of earthwork here to kind of move things around and, you know, level off the ground and dig in. And, you know, right now the ground's semi-frozen. It's not too bad. And I think this is going to help me. And actually, I have a couple of chores that this is going to come into good use today. So this, to me, I am very excited for. So I will fit this up with a number of the handle segments. And you'll see that the threads are very, very smooth. And when you get to that gasket, it kind of firms up and locks. So at that point, it takes a little bit of a click to get it to pop back out. And that's a good thing because you don't want the head of the tool rotating on you while you're trying to use it. Now that's a function of the nicely done threads and also the gasket on the inside. And one thing that I will note is I personally added some lubrication to the threads because I know I'm going to be out here in the wet and this tool is going to live out here. Now granted it is aluminum and it shouldn't corrode. However, because of moisture and the ability to potentially get in the threads while I'm using it in freezing conditions, I didn't want to find that the tool froze itself and I couldn't adjust it as needed while I'm out here. So I did add just a little bit overall of lubrication to the threads on each one of them just for the ease of getting the segments apart. And again, you'll hear how nicely 
everything threads together. So very, very well done. Now I'm gonna add, I'm gonna say right now, just three handle segments for the demonstration. And at the moment, we'll leave it at that. Moving forward, the shovel head. Now, there was a significant improvement in the locking mechanism from the first shovel I tested from Yakul to this particular lineup. And at this point, there was one in between, and you'll notice this nice collar. This threads very easily, allows you to adjust to multiple positions, so you can use this for semi ho, which is nice, or fully flatten it out for your shovel. Now, this is a multi-purpose shovel. You'll see here that it does have a semi-sharpened edge. That's not super sharp, so you're not gonna cut yourself, but it is semi-sharpened, so if you wanna do some chopping tasks. You have a couple little multi-tools here, a bottle opener. Here you'll see that's just a little bit serrated. Now, that's not super sharp, but again, you could do some notching if you had to, so that'll work pretty well. Now, this shovel head is a little bit smaller than some of the other ones that I've tested in the past, but again, this is a multi-tool and fairly compact and meant to be comprehensive in the overall kit. So they couldn't go too big and I understand that. But again, just adding a couple of segments here, we'll thread this together. And as we continue on, you'll see, I'm gonna add this segment, which has basically a glass breaker. That sort of pommel end is gonna be useful. Now there is a dedicated ice breaker in the kit, but to me personally, I would probably utilize this as well because I think this is gonna be a little bit stronger. This would give you the ability to potentially like crack open nuts or something like that, or you know, smash a rock if you needed to. You'd probably cause a little bit of damage, but at the same time, it's nice that it's there. There. Now this particular handle segment you'll see because it is threaded at both ends makes essentially an adapter to allow you to put another female piece. So two male end threads and a female piece. Now this particular cap here does have, as you'll see, a compass in it, and it is a fluid filled compass. Now we took a look last week, I was trying to make an understanding of which direction I was facing, and I had an assumption that that way was south, but it turned out that straight in front of me is due south, and this is reflecting that exactly. Now as we look here, you do also get the ax, which for me, I won't use, I don't think, too, too much. But as you see here, it does have this mask, which works fairly well. And removing it here, I have used these in the past and they do come fairly sharp. Now I had a test where I did have two of these heads. One of them I reprofiled and the other one I used factory. And to be honest with you, the factory one blew away my reprofiled edge, so I probably shouldn't have messed with it. So the factory edge is pretty good on these. It's not gonna be hair popping sharp, but it's definitely a good quality serviceable edge. And so again, taking a look at some of these handle segments, you'll see that some of these are fitted with additional threads. So on the inside here, pulling this out, well, that is the dedicated icebreaker. So this here is literally a dedicated icebreaker. Now, one of these I did have in the past. Unfortunately, I bent it to the point where it did break. Because it's hollow, it does help with penetration into the ice, but it also makes it weaker. So I'm gonna have to test this at some point. I don't know if it will be today, but I am gonna have to test this. And that's why I'm saying maybe going with the pommel on that uh, glass breaker may work a little bit better, at least to get you started. I think this will work, but again, we're just gonna have to see. So for the meantime, I will keep this stashed on the inside. That's gonna go in here and you can choose whatever tool you want this to be stashed into. But what I can tell you is, because of that nub, you can't literally go directly against the tool head. You do need another segment. So with that said, I kinda messed up a little bit. I'm gonna have to unthread this one and use this for the handle segment inside my hoe. But at this point, I can continue on threading this together. And there you have it. Now the next piece we're gonna take a look at here, you'll see this as I remove it is a knife. 
and a little fish scaler. So these knives, they unfortunately aren't the best. I would like Yakul to spend a little bit more time on their edge if they want this to be more of a serviceable tool. I'm not positive what kind of steel this is, but at the same time, it's just for basic tasks. So if you had to do things like cutting fishing line or something like that, or even processing your food, it's not gonna be a problem, but it's definitely not the best and won't be, I would say, more capable for like the woods crafty type of stuff. It's not really meant for that. But at the same time, if it's a survival shovel, you may possibly need it. So I would like to see Yakul spending just a little bit more time on their edge refinement there. But overall, it's a serviceable knife. But with that said, we'll stash this away for now. Keep it nice and secure. Again, nice threads. Well done. And we'll put it inside the axe. Now, at this point, you'll see there are some still... A uh, few remaining things, as I mentioned, this here is a comprehensive kit. Now, I do have this with me, and if you look, this says it's an all-in-one paracord survival kit. So inside here, you'll see on the outside, you have 550 mil spec paracord, and there's two lines. I'm not sure how long, but they're there. You have this adjustable buckle, which is actually pretty useful if you think about it. This could come definitely into play. Inside you have dried jute tinder bundle, two stainless steel fishing swivels, a needle, a small utility knife blade, two lead sinkers, two safety pins, two paper clips, two small foam bobbers, fishing line, and fishing hooks. So this here alone is pretty awesome. If you think about all the stuff that's in this, that's absolutely great. And it does appear as though if you are careful, you may be able to get that to fit inside one of the segments. I don't think with the swivel, so this will just stay inside my case. The next thing you'll see here, this did come with a ferro rod stashed on the inside. Now that makes me think that there's probably another segment here with interior threads. And if I had to look carefully and go through all of these, this interior thread is what we need. So I need another piece that has that interior thread in the male section. Actually, it looks like maybe this one. So let's take a look here. Yeah, so here we go. So it's the male sections that have the interior threads. So this works out well. So that's perfect. So if you look here, you do have the ability to store sort of all of these accessory tools inside the handles. So you end up with that icebreaker, you end up with the knife and fish scale, and then here the whistle and that ferro rod. So definitely cool. And one thing that I'm thinking might be nice, and, and I know it's a subtlety, but if you notice, every single handle segment on the entire kit is black. It would almost be nice, and I know it's another step, if somehow on these rings, they could just maybe put a color. Now, whether it's white or silver or gray or red or yellow or whatever, but on these segments, it would be kind of nice just to have a color because then you'd know, well, maybe the red one has your knife and maybe the blue one has your icebreaker and maybe the whatever, the white one has your whistle. But just a thought, if they wanted to add a little color, it may indicate which segment the tools are in. And so now I'll just thread these all back together and we'll continue on. And so at this point you'll notice I have all three of the tools built. I have the shovel at a reasonable length. I have the pickaxe and hoe at a reasonable length. And I have the hatchet at appropriate chopping length. But there's one more piece. Well, what is this? This is actually the base for a walking stick, which I think is a brilliant thing to add to a survival kit. If you think about it, it's a survival kit. Bottom line is anything can happen. You could get injured, something could happen, and you may need to brace yourself and help aid yourself out of a situation. So for me personally, I think this is a great addition to the kit. Now, I have thought about the fact that this could potentially be used even as a splint. So because you have multiple sections and you can make this to length, depending on the length of your legs or what you need to do, you could actually add segments. You could lash this to your leg to help stabilize and really make yourself a reasonable splint. 
or if you had to, you could make a splint with other means and you could use this to leverage to lean on. There are a couple things that I'd like to point out. One is at this point, this is a good viable handle segment. I would love to add this to the end of one of these tools, but I can't because this kit does not have an additional mail-by-mail -mail threaded adapter. So what I would love Yakul to do is include an additional mail-by-mail -mail threaded adapter which would allow it to go on one of these additional segments. So that's the first thing. The second thing is, if you look here, this hatchet right now has the compass on the end which essentially acts as a cap. The other two tools, well at this point, that's a hollow end and the shovel is also a hollow end. So if I had a mail-by-mail -mail adapter, this could be one closed end and we need another cap. So an additional capped section that would go on here. So Yakul is on the right track and they're making all the right moves, but I think just a couple of little additional details added to this, which shouldn't add too much in the way of difficulty or even cost, but it would add a lot to the overall functionality. And the other thing that would be great is if you add that mail by mail adapter, at that point, you can actually put this on the bottom of one of the other tools. Now, let's just say, for example, you did get injured and you had to really get yourself out. Well, if you put the cover on the pickaxe, this really gives you something pretty solid that if you were walking, you could lean against. Now, with the cover, that's not gonna be terribly sharp. This isn't too sharp either, and I don't think you'd be at any danger, but it would really allow you to almost even make a crutch if you had to. And that to me is a big deal. This is gonna be stout, it's gonna be strong, it's gonna be firm, it gives you the ability at that point to help self-rescue. So, yeah, cool, you're definitely on the right track. I just think a couple little additional things would help. And as I did that demonstration here, you'll see now the end of my threads are all full of dirt and snow. So, not a big deal, I just think little minor improvements will top this off and this kit will be perfect. Unfortunately, that's, that's all rock under there. So, my original plan to put a pocket in here is not gonna work. So, I gotta go to plan B, but that's okay. You know, that's why we test this stuff out. Let's check this out. Actually, it needs to be about here. I think that's gonna work. Wow, surprised there's no frost at all here. I mean, it's been, I would have thought cold enough, but we've had periods of warm too, so I guess it's never been able to creep in. Maybe I'll be able to build this out after all. There's the edge of the ledge.
All right, see if I can get this log down into here. Who knows? This thing is massive and it's heavy. It's hell. Oh, come on. It slid down on me. That's gonna be a setback. It was going in the hole and now it slid. I don't know if I'm going to be able to slide this back up and into place, but I'll try. Oh man, I had it too. I might need to dig my hole further back at this point. Oh, I think that's what I got to do. Otherwise, I'm going to beat myself up. on the edge of the ledge again, but I can luckily avoid it if I'm careful. Uh, I only get one more shot at this. If I ever shoot my hole again and the log slides back down and past my hole, I'm screwed. But at this point, I should be able to roll it and it'll dump in there. And that's just gonna foot it. That's all I'm trying to do is get this to foot against the hole so it doesn't continually slide so that way when I lash it to the tree everything's secure so this is gonna be a little bit of work but it's worth it it's gonna also be for safety because if this slides out on me or if there's anybody underneath that could be disastrous so this is kind of a big deal Looking promising right there. Let us try this again. Should fairly straightforward. Uh, be able to just drop in here. There we go. All right. That looks good. That's mighty nice. Oh, that is just beauty.
So for the overall amount of twisting and torquing I did on this, for it to loosen up one time, and maybe I just didn't have it tightened down as much as I could, that's pretty good. I mean, you know, a tool like this, and I can tell you their prior iterations weren't nearly this good, and they were good, but these are actually very much improved. And uh, yeah, this locking mechanism on the shovel head is far superior. I, I love it, and it's so stout and secure. There's no wiggle, no move. Look at that, zero movement. That's a big deal. No rattle. So I'm digging this. <laughs> I didn't even mean to do that, but you see what I did there? <sighs> but yeah, I'm glad to have these tools here at camp. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to one of my prior kits and I'm gonna see if I can steal the parts because that open handle there is gonna bug me. And you can hear it when I'm you know, digging. It's like dong, dong, dong. So between the noise, um, but also just the longevity of the threads and not getting grime inside the tool. And the other problem is, now that's leaving the inside open to moisture, uh, this is gonna live outside, so I don't know, bugs? Who knows what's gonna live in this thing? So anyway, but long story short, so far, so good. Nice job, yeah, cool. And the pick and hoe, again, instrumental in my ability to do this work. So it loosened the soil, it allowed me to get in there and kind of break it all up, and it made it easier to work with the shovel, and I was even able to chop through some basic light roots. Nothing major, but it did what I needed it to. So again, a few times I had found that I accidentally hammered down on the ledge, but you know, little, you know, paint removal on the back end there, no big deal. So yeah, same thing, you know, I wanna protect the tool, so I need to see if I can dig up a second cap, and maybe I'll find myself a mail-by-mail -mail adapter that will allow me to use that handle piece on here. So um, overall, great. I'm, I'm, I'm really liking having these tools here at camp, so very pleased. Well, so all right guys, there you have it, a feature overview and the start of some heavy duty use using this Yakul Wilderness Survival Off-Road Kit. Again, I just have to say thank you very much to the people at Yakul who did provide this product for review. Yakul's doing a great job. They definitely are. They've listened, actually, and I've had a few things that I've gone back and forth with them. I do go back and forth quite a bit with their representatives, and they listen, and they're trying to make improvements to their products. And that, to me, is pretty much as important as having a tool in the first place. I mean, having people that you know, listen to feedback and want to improve and come out with bigger kits and better kits and they make, you know, pretty significant manufacturing changes to their product. I gotta say, I am quite impressed. So having these tools here are gonna be definitely instrumental in my ability to build this bushcraft shelter. So even though I didn't use all of the tools in this particular review, I am going to rely on these heavily to build this shelter and camp out. So if you wanna see more use as I continue to use these throughout my project, keep an eye out on my Bushcraft Wonderland mini series. I will be building this entire area out, hopefully substantially if things go well, and I will definitely be relying on these tools. So, all right guys, thanks for stopping by. I hope you like what you saw. I hope you found it a little bit informative. If you like what you saw, please like, share, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for stopping by. Take care now. I'll see you soon.